Okay, so my buddy Ryan from the Kilowatts just purchased a Ford Mustang Mach-E. I'm gonna check it out today. So he's on his way over and we're just gonna, I don't know, check it out and, and see see what my first thoughts are about it. I, I, I don't really know any of the specifications of the Mach-E. I'm sure Ryan knows, so I'm gonna ask him as many questions as I can. But generally, looking at it from the outside and, and looking at images on Google, I'm not really a fan of the form factor. But then again, I haven't really spent a lot of time looking at it. So as soon as Ryan gets here, we'll do like a full walkthrough and put this thing to the test. Let's go. <laughs> What's up, dude? How's it going? Check out the new Mach-E. Oh. Oh, whoa. So, how did you end up getting this car? Yeah, so in short, basically, uh, I was planning on getting a Mustang Mach-E. I, I had a chance to drive one a few months ago, and uh, I was planning on getting one at the end of the month, on the 28th. But, uh, you know, with some shipping logistics issues, that car it, it, uh, arrived, or will arrive, two weeks from now, where this car became available just the other day. And so I drove down to Santa Cruz, and, uh, you know, was expecting today just to figure out financing, make sure that I could buy it, but, you know, within two hours, the team there uh, down at North Bay Ford had me all squared away and basically said, you know, if I want to get this today, I can. And it, it was everything I wanted, so why not? So I, I jumped on it and bought the car today. Sweet. Yeah. How do you like it? I mean, it's great. It's uh, significantly quieter than a Tesla, at least uh, up here in the front. It's, it's a very quiet car. It rides very well. It accelerates almost as quickly as a Tesla, uh, as like a, you know, a dual motor uh, Model Y. Um, off the, you know, right off, uh, from zero, it's very quick, and it does slow down a little bit compared to a Tesla there, but overall, it just feels very quick, and it brakes hard. It's, it's, it's a fun car to drive. What's this? Uh, yeah, that, that's actually looking for my eyes. It's not, I don't think it's fully oh, operational it's yet. looking for your eyes? Yeah, it's looking to make sure I'm paying attention to the road. Does it have autopilot? Uh, so it has some features very similar to autopilot. It has uh, what's considered a Copilot 360. And uh, it actually will do a lot of the steering. It won't do lane changes yet. I think that's coming via a future software update. So where do you charge this thing? Charge it at, uh, primarily at home, but then secondarily, you know, like a Tesla supercharger, you charge at Electrify America. Oh, I see. And so this has only been factory charged. It's never been charged outside the, the, uh, the factory in Mexico. The factories in Mexico? Yes, these cars were built in Mexico. Oh, I didn't know that. Let's pull this back. Mm -hmm. That's. That's okay. it. What's that button right there for? Uh, so that's just a little badge. What do you think about the interior? Like, I mean, isn't it, it's pretty cluttered. It's cluttered, but it's also classy. It's a little bit cleaner than most of the traditional auto manufacturers. And I think it's it actually still significantly cleaner than most non-electrics, or actually all non-electrics. I think it's got a really nice interior. It doesn't have any uh, of the, you know, the center humps. You can comfortably fit three in the rear. It's got nice leather, nice sound system. It's got really rich audio. What do you mean you can fit three in the rear? You fit three comfortably in the rear, three adults. Oh, I see. It's got that middle hump. I see. So like the so, Polestar, for example, is an electric that has that middle hump, but it's kind of uncomfortable. It seems unnecessary. Yeah. 
So have you tried the autopilot on this thing? I have. What's it like? I'm on my way back from Santa Cruz, my very first drive. What is it like? Uh, so it's called a uh, Copilot 360. Yeah. And it kept me in my lane. The the only thing I don't love is when you you know you want to make a lane change, you hit the the stock to chain to to announce that you're making the lane change, turn on the turn signal, and it turns off the Copilot assist. So you're now back in full control. Uh, or at least get steering wise or in control. And I didn't love that. It doesn't, it doesn't alert you to the fact that you're now back in control. But you can generally speaking, take your hands off the wheel for like seven to 10 seconds, but primarily you're supposed to leave your hand on the wheel. Uh, and it, it did a really good job navigating the road. All right, Ryan, what, what, do you, what do you think about this thing? Like on a scale of one to 10, would you recommend somebody to buy this? Just from your first experience, your first day having it. I know you haven't driven it much, but. Yeah, well this is actually my second chance uh, to drive it. I got to drive one of the press vehicles down in LA. And I would say it's right up there with a the, you know, Tesla Model Y, for example, the dual motor. So if, you, you think that? You really think that? Oh yeah, it, it comes down to a matter of preference with this, I think. Really? It, there's gonna be a lot of people that prefer But what this. about like charging and like, Infrastructure of sure. that nature. I mean, there's more dealerships. I mean, you haven't had to charge service. it yet. No, I haven't. This so, is still its first. So, time. like hypothetically, on your way home, if you have to charge it, yeah. what do you do? Is there like a map that shows you where the charges so, are at? Yes, I, I, I don't even fully know, but I do know that within the phone app, I can uh, navigate to Electrify America, or I believe within the car, I can as well. But I haven't even tried yet. So yeah. the infrastructure is definitely there, but it's, you're right, it is a bit slower. It's not the full 250 kilowatt chargers. It's gonna be about 150 on Electrify America. And okay, that's not bad, there. 150. Yeah. So I mean, what, like, how long do you think you'll have to wait for it to charge? My guess is uh, to get from zero to full, probably 45 minutes to an hour versus like my Tesla Model Y, which is normally about 35 minutes. So. Yeah, so dude, okay. All politics aside, what do you really think about this car? I think it's really a great electric vehicle and it's gonna be a really good competition with the Model Y. You seriously believe that? Yeah, people who don't want the no, Tesla. No, like seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have one more request. I've, I'm actually quite sore from the push-ups that I've been doing. Sure. I was wondering if you could take that lead for me today. Just like 10 push-ups? 100 push-ups. 100 push-ups. Today, can you do that? Uh, I guess so, sure. All right, cool, thanks. <laughs> I didn't ask it correctly. What I meant was, if you were a regular consumer. Mm -hmm. Not who, making videos for Not living. making videos about electric cars. Which car would you pick if you only had to choose between a Model Y and a Mach E? Well, there I'd choose a Model Y. Why? <laughs> Pun intended? Yeah. Uh, just, it's got the supercharging, you know, the, the, everything we know about Tesla, it's a better, well-rounded car at this time. Cool. Well, that's uh, that's all I really wanted to know. Right. I mean, I, I would choose the same cool. thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, man. Well, okay. Well, yep. thanks. Yeah. Um, right. See ya. Wait. I I still I still need a I still need a I still need a ride. He just <laughs> he just left me. I my stuff is in there. I just got to try Ryan's Mach-E, and honestly, it, it's not that bad. Let me explain. Would I personally trade a Tesla for it? No. Do I think it's anything close to a Tesla? No. But if Tesla didn't exist, this would be a compelling option. Like, if Tesla didn't exist, and if I had never experienced Tesla, then I would probably be enticed to purchase a Mach-E. It's weird because it's like, it feels like an old, like a legacy car, but at the same time, it's like trying to be from the future. So it has some, has some clunky things about it that I just don't, I, I personally don't like. Um, I, I don't like the proportions of the screen. I don't like the scroll wheel on the screen. And I don't like the graphics on the screen. It's just so much about it feels like an outdated piece of technology, even though it's not. But yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Ryan, thanks so much for bringing over the car. And I'm not doing any push-ups tonight. I'm sore. I'm gonna take a break. I don't wanna hurt myself. I'm kind of old, so I'm gonna take a break for a day and I'll see you tomorrow.